Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about sitemaps and why they're important. And I'm also going to share with you a really awesome sitemap template that you can use within Sketch and Envision. My current project team uses something very similar to this, um, mainly because it gets us out of PowerPoint, which is always a plus. We hate PowerPoint and try to avoid it at all costs, um, especially as designers, you know, we can do better. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, the main reason we use it is because we can actually create more of an interactive sitemap rather than a static sitemap. And depending on the website or the application that you're designing, sitemaps can get pretty uh, messy and crowded. So having like a clickable, almost prototype-like experience for the sitemap can be very useful and kind of avoids all that stuff. So first I'm gonna tell you a bit about why sitemaps are important, what they are, you know, why we make them in the first place. And then I'm just gonna walk you through an example website and then I'm gonna use this template to map out this example website and you'll see kind of how useful this could really be. So think of a sitemap as a website or application's architecture. A sitemap helps you organize all of a site or application's content. It usually addresses things like navigation structure and depending on how granular you make them, you can include things like in-page links. Um, usually though, they're more high level. Um, they deal with things like navigation and I'll get into the different levels of navigation later on. But basically just know that a sitemap helps you organize a website or applications content. So one big issue within UX that we see a lot is that some websites have really poor navigation structure, which in turn makes it difficult for users to find what they need to find on the website. So in order to help solve this issue, what we we'll usually first do is just go in and map out a website as it is currently, really understand the current navigation structure, make sure we account for all the content on the website, all the web pages, and we map out the site as is, and then we'll kind of improve upon that sitemap just to make it easier for users to find what they need to find on the website. So you can use the template for pretty much any website, but today we're gonna to be mapping out Yeti's website. They make like outdoorsy type things, camping gear, water bottles, coolers, etc. And I think they actually have a very good navigation structure. It's really easy to find things on their site. So this should be pretty easy to demonstrate for you guys. So from left to right, you'll see they have their main navigation. So you have your homepage, that's what we're looking at right now. Then you have your shop, your custom shop, this is Yeti, and then you have your utility navigation. So yeah, shop, custom shop, this is Yeti, that's like your level one main navigation. And then you have your level two below that, so your hard coolers, your soft coolers, like your different products. And then you have a level three, so the individual products within each of these level two categories. So really easy to navigate in my opinion. Like if I wanted to find a specific hard cooler, I would just go to shop, hard coolers, and then I would pick the one that I want. Pretty intuitive. Um, they also have a footer. So this is something I also include in my template for this for the site map. So yeah, let's start mapping this site. So let's go back to the sketch file. And here we're looking at the first screen of the template. So this is like your start screen. So as you see, we have a way to expand the main navigation expand utility nav and expand the footer. We have the company's logo here in the top left and we have the key down here. So this might not make sense right away, but once we actually start mapping out the site, it'll make more sense. So we have a level one category, level two, level three, level four, external URL, web app, form, and section header, not a page. Um, I'm not sure if all of these will be relevant to Yeti site, but they're in the key just in case. So if we go back to, sorry, if we go back to Yeti's site, let's start with the level one navigation or the main navigation. So we have shop, custom shop, and this is Yeti. That'll be our level one navigation. So I have a screen that says main navigation open. So we're gonna basically click on this main navigation and now we're gonna expand that level one navigation. So think of this as just a regular prototype, right? So what I've done is I've symbolized all of these things for you guys. So all we have to do is go to insert document level one and you'll see something pop up. So let me zoom in. It just says item. It's a blue rectangle and we can space this nicely. So maybe we'll do one, two, three, 40, one, two, three, 40. It seems about right. And what was the first level one item? So we have shop, custom shop, and this is Yeti. So we can just quickly override this and call it shop. And then same thing for 
custom shop. And what was the third? Sorry, this is Yeti. I just chose a spacing of seven. I know this looks a little small, but I keep them small just because some sites can get pretty crazy. So we want as much room as possible, especially if we're sharing with the client, they wanna be able to see everything if possible. So this is Yeti. Cool, so there's your main navigation open. Now let's head back to the website to see what falls within shop so we can create that kind of level two navigation. So if we go back to the site, Within shop, we have hard coolers, soft coolers, drinkware, bags, buckets, chairs, accessories, more gear, gift cards. So a lot, <laughs> a lot of product lines here. Um, but let's go back to the sketch file now. So we actually wanna create another screen to simulate that we're kind of looking within shop. So I'm gonna just duplicate the screen by option dragging, whoops. And put it right below and we'll call this um, shop selected if it would let me there we go shop selected and to show that shop is selected what we can do is let me zoom in here just select shop and i'm going to right click and i can do replace with document remember i symbolized all these things so i'm just going to select l1 selected and now we have this angled, triangled <laughs> uh, edge here. So what I'm gonna do is draw a line by hitting L on my keyboard and holding shift to make a straight line. And maybe I'll just put it about here. And I'm gonna make a little bracket. So let's make a perpendicular line like so. And now I'm gonna add a level two component. So I'm just gonna insert another symbol. We'll call this L2. And L2 is this grayish color. And again, we can just override this symbol with, what was it? Hard coolers, soft coolers, etc., etc. So let's do that. Let's do hard coolers. And I'm gonna skip ahead and we'll be back when all the level twos are done. All right, so there's your level two component mapped out. Let's go back to the website. And now we have some level three items here. So under hard coolers, you see all these individual products. I'm not gonna map all these out just for the sake of time, but I'll show you what I would do just so you guys get the point. So again, we can go into insert symbol and this time we'll do a level three. And we'll use the same spacing. So I think it was seven. And I would just duplicate it over and over again until all the level threes were listed out like so. And then if I wanted to go in and say add, what was it called? The roadie 20. I would just go in, edit the component and override it. So roadie 20. And these aren't aligned. So yeah, that's kind of what I would do for each of these. Um, so I'll just skip ahead and I'll show you what this would sort of look like. All right, so we mapped out all the level three pages. I limited it to four. Obviously there's a lot more on the actual Yeti site, but let's just say that there were a bunch of these um, level threes, right? And they're also within these level threes, like let's just pretend like within each of these, there was another level to these guys. There aren't in this case, but some websites will have a level four navigation. So notice I actually added a level four in the key here, um, but there's all these level threes. There's not that much room for more level fours on this artboard here. So what we can do, let's just pretend maybe this guy, um, we wanted another level within this roadie 20 here. So we can just replace it with a level three expand. And notice now there's a little arrow here to simulate that it can be expanded. So what I can do is just duplicate this artboard. We'll have to design another screen. And we would call this, I don't know, roadie, roadie 20 expanded hyphen level four or something. 
and then we can add some level fours underneath this guy. So we'll just move these guys down and then we can just add some level fours like so. Spacing equal. So now we can change this expand to a collapse. I also have that symbol as well. So, cool, so now you kind of get the point. So if you're in this screen and you see there's an arrow next to one of these, you can click on it and it would expand like so, and then you could collapse it and link back to this screen. So you're starting to see how this is becoming an interactive sitemap. And this will make more sense when I actually start linking this out. So once you do all this, you would then repeat obviously for custom shop and this is Yeti, very similar process. Um, earlier I mapped out the utility nav and the footer as well, so you could view those. So the utility nav, it's really basic. They just have a search and a shopping cart. So if you go on their site, it's literally just search and shopping cart. Um, but cart is not a page, so this I actually use this guy down here, the section header, not a page. There's also a symbol for that. Um, and also at any time, if you guys wanna just replace these, a really easy way to do it, you just go right into the symbol here and you can change it to whatever you desire and whatever makes sense. So this one was not a page, it's just a section title. So that's why it gets this dotted border. And then I also did something for the footer. So they just have like their social media pages. They have an email list you can subscribe to customer support and some other footer pages. I didn't list them all because there's there's a lot, but that's what this all represents down here. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the main screens uh, mapped out. And then the next step would be to link this using Craft and Envision. So again, to be able to prototype within Sketch using Crafts, you'll obviously need to download Craft. I will include a link to the Craft plugin below in the description. But what you'll want to do once you have all your main screens mapped out, what you can do is head over here to the craft plugin, hit this little lightning bolt, and now you're ready to prototype. So as you see, you're in prototype mode now. You can select a layer and press C to begin. So let's zoom in here on this first screen, the start screen. We want to be able to click on this main navigation arrow to expand our main navigation. So with this layer selected, I'm just going to hit C and connect it to the main navigation screen. And we'll just add a link with a click gesture. We don't have to do anything fancy for these because this is just a site map, you know? We don't have to do any crazy animations here. But there we go, so that's linked. And we can preview this now. So we click on main navigation and our, our main navigation opens. So we can just continue linking as needed. So maybe we click on shop so let's press C, link to shop selected, add a link. And I'm just gonna keep linking our screens and we'll be back when that's done. All right, so I finished linking up all my screens. I know it looks pretty crazy right now, but all we have to do now to upload to Envision is hit this little upload icon. I already created a little sitemap demo project and it's just gonna upload, it's gonna ding, and we can now view this in Envision. So we open this up and here we're looking at our sitemap and you see when I click off, when I click on the screen, it shows the links that we're able to click on. So main nav, we open up, we can click through the shop, look at our level two and level three navigation. And even remember this one, we have a level four, so we can expand that drawer and just kind of click through it like a regular prototype. You can deselect shop, open the utility nav. Here's the utility nav. You can deselect that. We can open the footer. There's our footer, and we're back to the beginning. So yeah, guys, cool little interactive site map. Um, helps you fit a lot on this one, one page and you kind of click through it to get a sense of all the site's content. So yeah, I'm sure you can see the many benefits of using Sketch and Envision for something like this rather than a PowerPoint deck. Um, definitely more interactive. We can also view more of the site map just in this one viewport. We don't have to use a bunch of slides, so that's always cool. Um, but yeah, if you were to present this to a client rather than a PowerPoint, I think they'd really appreciate it. Also, it's super easy to make changes to something like this. You can literally just go back into the sketch file and use the symbols to update, um, in this case, like any navigation changes you might want to make. 
uh, before you start redesigning the website. Um, yeah, really cool. Also your team, since it's Envision, can easily comment on this, give you feedback, say they don't like the name of this shop, but they could just write, you know, change name or something. Um, you can resolve comments within Envision. So yeah, really great way to do sitemaps. Again, I'm gonna leave the download link for this template in the description, so feel free to use. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment with what you wanna see next, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.